<laughs> All right, so things are changing. And it's not paranoia to notice these changes, especially in the attitudes towards precious metals. And on that note, I wanna share something with you guys that I think you're gonna find very interesting. So the information that I'm going to share with you guys today is about a two minute long clip that comes from a video that was linked to me by my good friend, Anthony G. And this video was posted on Scottsdale Mint's YouTube channel just about a month ago. And what it shows is Josh Fair, who is the CEO of Scottsdale Mint. You guys know Scottsdale Mint, they create gold and silver products for consumers. They also create uh, legal tender coins currency made from gold and silver for other governments. I think about 21 other countries, they make legal tender for those countries. He deals with central banks and governments probably on a daily basis. Their assets are in the billions. And so he knows what he's talking about when it comes to physical metals. Well, anyway, he's testifying before Wyoming State Senate because he's speaking on behalf of them creating a digital currency called stable tokens. And they have done that. That is, it's been passed and so now it's law there in Wyoming. They have a digital currency. Now this is different from the gold backs. And you guys know about the gold backs. They are a physical gold note. This is a digital currency backed by the state's physical assets. Their gold and silver. And one stable token is equal to one US dollar. And so what Josh Fair is doing there is he would love the opportunity to manage the state's physical assets in his new facility that they just built there in Wyoming. Basically, it's a free port. It's different from their mint. They store physical assets at this facility there in Wyoming. And he would love the state to store their physical assets at his facility. And so that is very interesting. But what I want you to pay attention to in this clip is how he describes the change in attitude that these big companies and central banks have towards physical metals. Now he's gonna say gold, but you know he's talking about silver as well. I mean, this company, they store both silver and gold, but they always say gold because gold is the star of the metals, right? But he's talking about silver as well. But listen to how he describes how the attitudes have changed in just the past few years toward moving away from paper silver, these derivatives, and into more physical metals. I'm in favor of the bill, and I'm not here so much to say what, why buy gold or when to buy gold, but I'd really like to talk to everyone about the trends of what we're seeing, and, and then also why, why is my company now in Wyoming? And um, what we're seeing is last year, the World Gold Council said, was the largest increase in central bank buying of gold since 1950. And that was back when there still was some uh, backing physically to the US dollar with, with gold. We're also seeing a trend of large institutions buying physical product. I know someone mentioned uh, electronic traded fund. They're getting out of those uh, bank um, products because they have derivatives. And if you read the prospectus, it's not very clear. I'll mention two. Um, publicly traded companies. One is Tesla, Elon Musk's company, um, just roughly 18 months ago, amended their SEC filings to, to have gold bullion on its balance sheets. Another company is Peter Thiel's um, big data company, which is the largest AI company, Palantir Technologies, based out of Denver. I think their market caps are out 19 billion. Um, they did the same thing just over a year ago and actually put, they actually purchased physical gold bars and put it in a private vault in the United States. So these are the trends that people are doing. They're getting away from the bank derivative products and they're actually going to physical possession uh, and, and stored. Governments are the largest producers of gold and silver, uh, precious metals, coins, and even bars in the world. My company represents, we're one of the top in the world. And a lot of the governments are now turning to a US company to make their products for them. For, for their citizens in their country and around the world. Uh, but 
but I'm just showing you the trends of what we're seeing since COVID and it's not stopping. Uh, like I told you, a lot of these, these, these companies like Palantir, um, they're not hedging their gold. They're putting it on their balance sheets. Central banks have gold on their balance sheets and they do not want to hedge it to the US dollar. They want it something different. But people are looking at other assets, just like you can own the dollar, you can own the Euro, the Yen, the Peso, whatever you want. Gold is the only other asset really that people are adding right now around the world to diversify on their actual balance sheets. All right, now I'm sure that these central banks and big companies have been buying physical metals long before now, but they have really ramped up their buying of physical metals just in the past few years. Other countries, I mean, China's buying every scrap of silver and gold they can get their hands on. India, the same way, Russia, all these, why is that? You know, I asked myself that and it's not, I don't think it's anything to panic over, but I just think that they see things are changing. They see things changing in the world economy. They see things changing in trade. And I think they're starting to see that they need to have their hands on something that's more stable, something that's more tangible, something with intrinsic value, just in case. And the thing is, we can do the same. We have access to the same things they have access to. Now, not at the volume, <laughs> but we have access to it. We can buy silver, we can buy gold, we can store it ourselves. We can prepare for whatever's coming as well. And if you can do that, why wouldn't you? And so that's the only thing I'm pointing out. It's not meant to scare you. It's not meant to try to get you to buy more silver and gold. It's basically just to say, if these things are going on, there is a reason for it. And whatever that reason is, it seems that we need to pay attention to it. You know, things are changing. There's no doubt about that. The economy is changing, has been changing. There's no doubt about that. So what do these changes mean to us, to you, to me personally? And if you come to the conclusion that it's not gonna affect you at all, then it's business as usual for you. But for me, I think that there's things that I need to prepare for and so this information that I come across, I want to digest that information. I want to analyze it and see if it's anything that's going to affect me and my loved ones on any level. And if I come to the conclusion that it does, then I want to see how I can prepare for it, most importantly. And if I think it's information that can help me out, then I want to share that information with you guys. But anyway, tell me what you think in the comments. You know, more good content coming up. You know, we're just going to keep the silver chain rolling. We know that physical metals is an asset. It is an asset for those who own it. And so we're just going to keep doing that, among other things, to prepare for the future. Because it's on its way. There's nothing you can do about the future being on its way. All you can do is prepare for its arrival. Appreciate you guys stopping by. Keep stacking. Peace. Ha 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 ha